my name is Girish Anantaraju, and uh, I'm the product manager for Fusion Application Security Console product. This is our safe harbor statement that whatever we'll be talking is just for information purposes only, and uh, there is uh, nothing in terms of timing or when this is going to be released. It's purely a discussion of Oracle. So today's uh, agenda. So we're going to be talking about the new feature called the user category. So I'll be talking about a few use cases. And I will talk about uh, how do we do user category management in Security Console. And I'm going to be also explaining how can you assign users to user category. And I'll be talking about a couple of points related to upgrade for uh, the 13.18.05 release related to user category. And in conclusion, I will walk you through a, a, a demo to show the different UIs and the workflow for user category. So let's get started with uh, the use cases. So uh, people uh, like those who are using solution applications start prior to release 13 or all the way back, maybe release 9 or release 11, uh, the notification management process was not self-service, if you're aware. Uh, you had to open an SR to either enable notification, disable notification, or customize any notification. And uh, when I say notification, this is related to the password lifecycle management or about user management. Maybe when you create a new user, the notification that goes out, you wanted to customize that. So all that was through an SR process. So we heard your request, and in release 12, we made it uh, self-service. So going along in the same uh, path, what we have now done is we have provided ability to more granularly control all your user management and uh, password lifecycle management. And we're excited to introduce this new feature called user category, where you now have the ability to categorize users as simple as external users and internal users. One of the most common use cases that I've heard from talking to our customers and partners is that they want to, uh, a way to basically control notification based on whether the users are using corporate single sign-on or whether they're using just uh, fusion applications for notification management. A common use case would be you might have your employees who are basically set up for your corporate single sign-on, and in that case, you might want to have your notifications that go out from Fusion applications disabled, and you want to manage all those notifications for password reset and things like that from your identity provider. However, you might have a set of users, maybe a supplier user, or you might have your contingent worker basically just using Fusion applications as the identity store. And you may want to use the notifications that come out of Fusion applications for password reset and new user creation. So in that case, you may want to basically uh, use the FA notifications. So today, as of release 12, you uh, you don't have this ability. So even though we have provided cell service, we don't let you distinguish between an external population of users and internal population of users. So starting release 13.18.05, you will be able to use user category and you'll be able to manage notifications by at the user category level. So that's a primary use case for user category. So we are also introducing a new uh, new concept called next URL. So and this next URL is primarily used in cases where let's say you have built a pass application and you're using our REST APIs that we provide in Fusion applications and you're using FA as the identity store. So the request that I've, uh, that I've heard uh, talking to customers and partners is once they're using PASS and if they're using FAS Identity Store for the user base who are using PASS, after the password reset event that occurs, they want the users to be redirected to the PASS application instead of going back to the, the login page. So today, if you guys are familiar, when you go, I did walk into the demo as well, when you go through the FA login page and click on the forgot password link, 
and you get an email, a one-time token, and once when you click on that uh, link, you are basically prompted to change your credential, and once you change your credential, you redirect it back to the SL login page. So now what we're providing is we're providing an ability to configure a new URL. It's called next URL. So next, the next URL is going to be your post SA password reset URL. And that URL will be an URL outside of an SA application. So you cannot redirect, use that URL to redirect to specific pages with Infusion applications. So this is primarily used to redirect the user completely outside of Fusion applications after they complete the password reset event. And what we are all we are providing is we are providing uh, you to basically configure this next URL at the user category level, right? For example, you might have built an application called Employee of the Month, and uh, let's say you want and you're using FA as identity provider for that pass application, and once the user uh, comes to the FA login page to basically reset password, once they complete that action they're going to be redirected to the employee of the month uh, pass application. So that's the uh, primary use case for next URL. So both these two use cases will, will be addressed with user category functionality. So let's go about the operations of user category itself on what we can and what we cannot do. So user categories can only be created using security console, right? I mean, that is the key takeaway uh, in this slide, right? So you won't be able to create user categories within, uh, using any other UIs with Infusion application, nor use any REST APIs, nor use any data loaders to create user categories. User category can only be created using security console. And, and the second thing is, once you create a user category, you cannot rename a user category. We, uh, however, we do allow you to delete a user category, but for the delete operation, before you do a delete operation, you must ensure that there are no users assigned to a uh, user category. So you have to basically move a user to a different user category and then you'll have the ability to delete uh, the user category. And at any given instant of time, a user can only be assigned to one user category, right? Meaning you cannot have a user both assigned to, and let's say you created two buckets of user called internal and external. So you cannot have user uh, assigned to both internal as well as external. So first of all, we don't allow that to get in any of the ways to assign to multiple user categories. But that's something for you to keep in your mind while you're trying to design and trying to bucket users into different uh, user categories. One thing to keep in mind is user can be present only in one user category. So starting 13805, uh, all users will be assigned what's called a default user category. So whether you use, whether you assign users to different user categories or you create user categories, it's, uh, it's, it's up to you on how do you want to bucket the users. But as soon as you do any provisioning, without even using any of the user category assignments, users are always assigned the default user category. So one way to look at it is when you're trying to design, it's uh, it's always good uh, to basically uh, use the default user category for your largest assignment of users, right? For example, your employees are using corporate single sign-on. Let's say you have 5,000 uh, users in your corporate identity store and you expect like 90% of them to be using corporate okay. single sign-on. So in that case, if, you, uh, if you're using default user category, that is you don't have to do anything, no configuration required or anything, so all those users with provision, they get auto assigned to default user category. So when you're trying to do your design, it's recommended that you, you chunk your biggest category of users to the default user category, so you don't have to do an additional operation to assign a user to user category, right? So that's something to keep in mind while you're trying to do a design of user categories. So, uh, and this is the new uh, UI for user category management. So I'll walk you through a, a detailed demo, but this is just a, a screenshot. So we will provide you to enter a user category name, and you can provide a text description for your own uh, reference in the future. And we also let you basically create a next URL. And if you don't, 
and next URL is not a required field. However, the user category name is uh, a required field. Like without uh, entering that, you won't be able to save a user category. Next URL and user category description is optional. And if you don't provide any URL in the next URL, so what that would mean is the post password reset, your users will be redirected to the FA login page. And again, when I say users, it's all those users who are not, who are not using your corporate single sign-on for password management. And um, we have now moved the notifications that was there at the user category level. So now you will have granular ability to control individual notifications at the user category level, right? So we see there are 10 different uh, notifications. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of them, a big chunk of them are related to password uh, lifecycle management, like it's when your password is already expired. There's nothing new. We provided this set of notifications in release 12. Now what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to move that functionality at a more granular, at a user category level. All the seeded uh, templates that are there and the events that were there, none of those events are changed and we are not adding any additional events. All we're trying to do in 1805 is we're trying to move this uh, notifications at an, at an user category level so we have more granular control, right? So all your existing, your password reset, your password expiration, your post password reset confirmation email, or your forgot username, so all those notifications and events will continue to work. And you still have the ability to add your custom templates, so that will still be there. So this, we have moved all those notifications in, uh, under the user category UI. And the next uh, uh, set of things is once you create a user category, you would want a way to assign users to a user category. Right, so in this next set of slides, I'm going to be talking about how you can assign users to a given user category. So we have multiple uh, ways that you could uh, leverage to assign users to user category. So in Security Console, we provide uh, two different zones, right? So from within the user category tab, within the Security Console, you have an ability to assign a user to a user category. Or if you are familiar with the Security Console user management UIs, you have the ability while you create a user using Security Console or while you're editing an existing user, you'll have an ability to change or to assign a user category from the Security Console user management UI. And we have also enhanced our Skim REST API, and this is the FA Skim REST API, which, uh, which went live in release 12. And uh, many of our customers are using that for integrations between their identity systems. So we have now provided a skim extension for basically assigning a user to a user category. And uh, many of our customers use HDL for bulk load. And so we have also enhanced HDL. So while you're provisioning, your initial provisioning, you want certain users to be bucketed under different user categories, so you now have the ability to use HDL to bulk operations. And skim also uses, uh, provides bulk interface. So those of you who are using SCAM, so the bulk interface has also been enhanced, basically support user category assignment. So in terms of uh, UIs, so this is uh, from within the user category UI, you will now have the ability to basically search the users and you'll be able to assign the user to a user category. So this is like you create a user category and you're trying to assign a user, so this is that UI, and you'll be able to assign there. And this is our user management UI, right? So for example, here, uh, user John, we are editing uh, John, and now we are providing a new LOV called user category. So in release 12 or prior to 13, 18, or 5, you would have not seen that list of value called user category. But starting 13, 18, or 5, while you're editing a an user, you will see this new LOV called user category, and if you have created user categories, you will get a pull down menu there and you can pick one of those LOV values to the user categories that you want. And again, when you create a an user by default, it's it's called the default user category as, as I was telling, right? You don't have to do anything. Whether you, you provision users in any of the ways that you're currently provisioning users, all those provisioning flows will continue to work. And 
they will be uh, assigned to the default user category. And uh, next is the scheme I was, I was talking about. And one thing that I want to explicitly call out is you can only assign users to an existing user category that you created in Security Console, right? So we are not allowing you to create user categories using the Skim REST APIs. So you would have to come to Security Console, create a user category, and once you've created a user category, you can start using the Skim REST APIs to either update an existing user, or in some cases, many of you are using Skim for provisioning flows as well. Let's say you have an external identity system, and while you provision the user there, at runtime, you may you may have use cases where you want to create a user. And again, I'm talking only all my discussion is around user. If you have noticed, I'm not talking about the person or the party record, right? This is at the user level, right? So everything at the user category is, uh, it doesn't matter whether you have a person associated or a party associated or if, if they have no association at all, right? All we are talking is at the pure identity store at the user level, at right? user category is at the user level uh, attribute. So if you're using uh, Skim REST APIs to basically sync your user from your external identity by the IDP to FA, you now have the ability while the user creation process itself to basically use the new Skim extension called FA user. And you could leverage that uh, Skim extension and add an additional, uh, add the Skim attribute called user category for FA user and you could assign the uh, user category that you've created in Security Console, right? So that is about uh, using post. And we have also used cases for patch, right? So let's say you already created your uh, users and you want to now change the users to a different user category. So you could leverage the patch. So in, in patch, you could just basically, uh, here's a sample patch, right? So you, your payload will just include the FA user and uh, you will associate the user category. In this case, I'm saying I've created a user category called employee and I'm just patching the user to that uh, employee user. And the way you use patch, if you're familiar, there's documentation about it. So you first need to query a user, get get the user's unique URL, and then you can patch a user. However, if you're post posting or creating a new user, you don't need to retrieve a new user. So that all those documentations are also live as you speak, it's there in docs.oracle.com and how you can leverage and things like that. So uh, that's about uh, the Skim REST APIs. And um, in terms of HDL, so starting 13.18.05, I know many of our customers use uh, HDL for bulk load. So uh, what, what we have done is we have enhanced the HDL user .dat and we will now provide a new attribute called user category. And again, even in HDL, you cannot use HDL to create a user category. Same thing, I'm repeating myself, is you have to first create a user category in Security Console, and as with Skim, you then can use the user category that you have created in Security Console and use that value to associate a user to a given uh, user category. And again, if you don't want to use a category, use a category that's uh, fine. You could basically, uh, if you don't pass any value, as I told, all provisioning flows will be defaulted to what's called the default user category. So if you don't pass any value, it's gonna get defaulted. And let's say you did an error. If, uh, you did a typo or you had a wrong user category. When I say wrong, that means the user category is not present in, user, in Security Console, however, you mistyped it, then um, the users will get assigned to default user category. So the two things to remember, both in Skim and in HDL, either if you pass a incorrect value, and when I say incorrect value, that user category is not present in Security Console, or you mistyped it, or if you are basically passing no value for user category, which is totally fine. So in all these cases, users will be uh, assigned something called the default category. And again, as I initially told, uh, you, you could leverage the default category to bucket your largest population of users so you don't have to 
assign those users uh, to a different user category or manage the user categories for those NFTs, right? And this is a sample uh, payload, right? So in this case, you need to have a, a person number, so you have a user, so you can, this is an example where I'm showing how to emerge for user dot that. And this is the new attribute called user category. And the user category value is the string that you created using security console. So it's, it's pretty simple, both in Skim and in HDL. You create in security console and you assign using your existing tool. So <laughs> we have provided bulk interfaces in, in, in Skim West and we have provided bulk interfaces for HDL. And in cases where you have like you know, a couple of users where you want to do on a day-to-day uh, basis, then you could use uh, security console to basically assign uh, three different user categories, right? And uh, that's about how you assign, right? So we talked about use cases, we talked about how you basically go about creating user category itself in security console, and then we walked about how can you assign users to different user categories, right? And I want to now talk about, touch upon uh, some of the uh, items related to upgrade. Right, and uh, let's say you have uh, you had certain users who were provisioned before 13.18.05, right? I mean, you could have come all the way back from release 5, release 8, or you could have purchased, let's say, in 18.02, for example, right? So any users that were provisioned before 13.18.05, upon upgrade, they will be auto-assigned to default category. In other words, uh, you will have the user category defined at all all points starting 13.18.05. And even if you don't explicitly assign a user to a user category, let's say in the upgrade case, if your user's provision before 13.18.05, all those users will get upgraded to the default user category. Right? You don't, there is no work, nothing that you have to do. Uh, all those users are auto-migrated to the default user category. And the, the other thing that I wanted to uh, call out was, as you know, starting from release 12, as I was telling that uh, we, we heard our customers and we made uh, the notification management self-service, like enable, disable, customization of notification for user lifecycle as uh, self-service. So what we have now uh, doing is we wanted to basically uh, provide a set of seeded notifications, right? Essentially, we wanted control of the notifications that we see using Security Console. And those of you who are familiar with roles in Security Console, in Release 12, we established what's called the policy lockdown in the sense all the order roles in Security Console you are not able to edit, right? If you want to edit a role, you basically create a copy of a role. So we have used the same paradigm for notification as well. So starting from 13.18.05, what we're doing is, if you had any notification, uh, let's say in R12, you customize the seeded notification, you allowed seeded notification customization in R12. So all those notifications that that you had uh, used, what what we'll do is, we, when we upgrade to 13.18.05, we will make those notifications as custom notifications in the sense like, uh, it's your notifications, you have customized it, and you have complete authority to control, edit, manipulate whatever you want to do with it, and we'll ensure that we migrate over your text and your status. For example, you might have disabled certain notifications, or you might have uh, disabled all notifications. We'll ensure we carry those forward. At the same time, starting 13.18.05, we are seeding a whole brand new set of seeded notifications. The content is going to be the same. Only thing is, you will start noticing a notification, those will be starting from Aura, right? You have the Aura password reset, Aura new user creation. I'll, I'll show you them, but I just wanted to call that out. And uh, all those will be seeded. And uh, let's say you are upgrading from 13.18.05 and you had disabled uh, notifications. Let's say all your user base were using single sign on and you are not using FA for password reset notification. And so you wanted to disable all notifications. So what will happen is upon upgrade, we will honor the set that you have done. That will get carried over, and uh, we will. And uh, what we will do is, if you had not changed the text of the R12 notification, then we will replace those notifications with our notifications. However, if you had changed the text, what we will do 
is we'll keep those notifications intact, including the enable disable status. Along along with that, we will seed our own set of uh, notifications, right? So that's one thing that I wanted to call it. So uh, the key things, right, is related to notification. We are seeding uh, the order notifications, and we're using the same paradigm as we have used with the roles in Security Console. That is, we will not let you edit the seeded notifications. However, you can enable and disable them. However, you won't be able to customize the text for seeded notification. If you want to customize the text, you would have to basically create a new template, and you can pick one of the 10 events that you give, and you could use your own text, right? So that will work. So that's the key point. And the second thing is, whatever you had customized for the R12 notifications will carry that over, including the notification settings. So, so that is the key thing. So upon upgrade, once you once your pod gets upgraded, what I wanted to call out is ensure that you go into Security Console, look at, so all this notifications will now be showing up under the default user category, right? So if you're an upgrading customer, I would strongly urge that once you get your notification, once you get your pod upgraded, uh, log into your system, go, now you'll see a new tab called user category, so click on that and you'll, under default, go on a notifications tab and ensure all your notifications and your statuses are the same. And if you want any changes, if everything is self-service, right, you can enable, disable, customize text, go ahead and ensure that you do that and you could then release the pod, right? That's uh, that's what I would suggest. And the other thing that I want to call out is, uh, which I already mentioned, uh, I want to explicitly make this clear, is if uh, all your existing user uh, provisioning will be assigned to 13.18.05. So this is basically uh, if you're provisioning users post 13.18.05, right? So if all those your know, existing workflows will continue to work, but beneath the covers, they'll get auto-assigned to default user category, right? And uh, if you want to go, the, if, if you don't want to leverage this external internal, uh, interfaces that we are trying to build, I think you could you could uh, continue to use what you're trying to use with, with no change. However, let's say if you want to start utilizing the new functionality that you're providing for user category, and you want to you want to bucket this uh, users into different categories, and you want to use next URL, let's say, right? And so what we would suggest is. You could now, in your user provisioning flows, let's say using HDL, you could now start using the user category attributes. So during your provisioning process itself, you can bucket the users into different categories. But if you don't want to do that, all of them will get assigned to default category. So in terms of provisioning flow itself, all just to summarize on the provisioning, so all users who were provisioned before 13.18.05 will get all assigned to default category, point one. And any users that you are provisioning starting 13.18.05, and if you're not using user category through HDL or SCIM, or in Security Console UI, they will be auto-assigned to default category, right? Those are the two key takeaways in, in this slide, apart from the notification things that I uh, spoke about. So with this said, let me just jump into uh, the demo so that I'll give you a feel of what I just talked to in terms of the points. So let me log into a, a Fusion instance. So I log in as a user who's got the ID Security Manager access. And I saw some of one of the I saw one of the customs popping up in which UI will it show up. So this is our Security Console UI, those who are familiar with it. So you will start seeing a new icon called User Categories. So right here, it's called User Categories. And, and again, what I was trying to tell earlier was, once you get your part upgraded, go to User Categories. You will see something called Default, and this will be there in all parts upon upgrade starting 13.18.05, and there is no exceptions to it. That's how the current design is done. So you can go there. And this will be the default category. And you could go to the notification tab. So if you're an upgrading customer, you went through an upgrade, ensure that all your things are present and you're seeing, you'll see all these auto notifications. So these are the new set of ones. You ensure your enable disable status is right. And uh, global enable notifications is right. So uh, those of you are familiar, 
instead of enabling, let's say you're a single sign-on uh, is your primary uh, interface to log into SVN, and you're doing password management in an external identity provider. Instead of going and disabling individual events, you can just go and disable at the global level. So ensure that if you're done that, uh, log in and ensure the default category is turned on. And again, you can go to users tab, and this is going to list all your users who are assigned to default uh, category, right? Mm -hmm. And that is about uh, the user, user category. So let's default category. So let me walk you through on how can we create a user category. So the user category, in the user category tab itself, we will provide a new uh, icon called create, as I showed. And we are moved into the new uh, UI paradigm, right? For those of you are familiar for the role creation, we were using something called the train stop UI patterns, and now we are moved into this uh, view only and edit only mode, so that you get a bigger real estate for your UI. So this you'll start noticing, we are applied that paradigm in this uh, new user category tab. So once you click on the user category, it will show up the uh, read-only mode. So if you had an existing user category, you can get that information. If you're creating new, just go ahead and click on edit. And uh, let's say for this demo, let me just call it demo over here. Uh, let me just say demo category. All right. And next URL. And again, as I was trying to say, if you do, if you this is for the past use case where where post password reset, you want to redirect the user to a pass instance. If you don't want to do that, don't worry about it. It's it's a non-required field. Leave that blank and click on save and close. So now this will create a user category. So let's wait for some time while this user category gets created. So we now create a user category. Uh, next, move into the notifications tab. And let's say you want to you're you're happy using the default set that we have provided, so then there is no action for you to do. However, let's say you are using this for external user uh, management, so you can click on the edit button and you can basically disable at the global level, right? And uh, or you could, let's say you want to just disable the password reset event, however you want the new user uh, or the forgot username template, or whatever use case that you want to do. So you can go at the seeded template, you can go enable and disable at the individual template level. And as I was saying earlier, for the seeded uh, temp uh, templates, the one that starts Laura, you can enable and disable them, but we won't let you edit. So I'm trying to type in my keyboard, you're not, be, you're not able to see, but I'm trying to edit it, it will not let me edit the contents. Right, so this is something that we have enforced starting 13.18.05. So you, uh, let's say you want to enable, disable, you could do that for the CD templates, but you won't be able to change the content of the templates. And again, all these tokens for the templates, the same set of tokens we are there in R12, we're gonna carry that over. There is no new set of tokens that are being introduced, and these are well-documented tokens with there in docs.oracle.com. So nothing of the tokens are getting changed. So all your notification functionalities continue to be the same. There's no change in it. One thing I want to call out is you will not be able to edit the seeded text. So if you want to create, let's say, your custom template, you can come and you can pick one of the events. And here we pre-fill with the seeded data. And here you are welcome to basically uh, give whatever message that you wanted to give, right? And you can save and close, enable, disable. So that's about notification. So once you're done, uh, customizing your notification templates, or let's say you don't want to do anything with the notification templates, whatever the use case entails. Once you're done with this tab, you can do a save and you're done. So what we did is we created a demo uh, category. We went ahead and we, we in this use case, we're thinking, okay, so whatever Oracle is shipped, I'm fine with that for my user base. I don't need any edits and I want all these notifications. They seem very useful for my business use case, so let me go with that. And then I'll, I'll get this users tab where I can go ahead and cre uh, add users, right? So I click on edit, and again, we're using the same paradigm. Let me slow down. We, again, it's an edit, view only. So if you have users, we will list all the users. And we, we go into the edit mode. And the edit mode, you can click on add. So let me add, so I created a user called Alice. So let me search for Alice over here. 
and so I'll go ahead and add Alice to the demo user category that we just created. So I'm click on done. So now we are back into the view only mode. Now it's now to list out all the users. So what we did is we added uh, Alice to the demo user category that we created. So I'm happy with the bucketing that I've done with the notifications, and I'm happy that uh, I don't need any next URL for this demo. So we are good there. So I click on done. So we created a user category called demo, right? It's right here. So one thing I wanted to call out is we provide, uh, as I told, we provide an ability to delete. So let's see, we can go ahead and delete this user. So it, it, Security Console does not allow us to delete. So as the point I was trying to highlight is, as long as if you have users assigned to a user category, you will not be able to delete the user category, right? I think that is the key thing that I wanted to uh, highlight in this delete uh, part of the demo, right? So now let's say I want to delete this. Uh, I, I don't like this naming conventions or uh, whatever, so I'm gonna go here. And let's say I want to remove Alice from this user category. And when I just delete, I'm not deleting a user. All I'm trying to is removing the tag of this demo user category for Alice. So once I remove Alice from a user category, then Alice will be put back into the default user category bucket. So I'm gonna remove Alice from the demo user category. And I'm done, now I don't see any users, all that is good. Now let's see if I'm able to delete demo. Okay, so I, I get a warning saying that I sure you want to delete, so I click on delete. And it's deleted, it's done, right. So second common questions that I'm seeing come through is can I change the user categories? Yes, uh, of course, so what we did right now is we changed Alice user category from uh, demo to default, right? So as by the by the action of deleting a user from a user category, you're basically assigning them to a default user category. However, if I go to a different user category and uh, pull a an user, so implicitly that gets changed, right? So this is how you change user categories using uh, uh, the user category tab. So the other way, as I showed in the UIs as well, so let's see. Let me search for a user. So I have a user called James King. So I go, James is already created in the system, right? And in the view mode, I see that James is assigned a default user category. So I click on edit for James. Now in my LOE, I can now pick any new user category that I want to assign James to, right? And I'm happy James being a default, so I'm not gonna do anything and I'm gonna do cancel. And the second uh, is, how do you provision a new user's UI about user categories there? So we're providing that as well. So when you create, those of you who are familiar with Security Console, add user interface, we are now provided a new LOV called user category. So you can fill all this existing part of the UI, the same that was prior to 1805, no change one new element that you're gonna start seeing that in 1805 is this user category. And if you have defined user categories, you'll get here, right here, and you can pick one and you're good to go, right? So that's about how you assign or change user categories, how do you delete user categories, and how do you manage user categories, that part of the demo, right? Now let me walk you through a demo sample set that I've created, right? So I've created three user categories, as you can see. One is the default, right? This is the default set. And the second, just for this demo sake, it, I call this employee local, as a second user category. And the third user category, I call it employee pass FAS IDP. So let's uh, walk through each one of them, right? At uh, the default category, as you can see, I have disabled notification. And, and what we made is we made it very simple for customers. Instead of going and looking at the individual tab, we will list out what are the key things that are there. So in this, what we are stating is, uh, this is default user categories. And uh, the use case is we have disabled notifications. Basically, the global notifications for default is disabled. 
So basically, it looks, appears like the customer wants to use this for the single sign-on use case, and he's not interested to get the password reset or new user account notification. And we also see that the next URL is blank. And so that means, uh, since password reset is not being used, so this is irrelevant, all right? And so, so all my single sign-on users, I'm basically bucketing at a default. So that's the use case, and I've disabled notification. And the third use case, uh, the second uh, is I have a uh, category called employee local. So this is basically, it could be, again, it could be supplier users, or it could be a contingent workers, or whatever your business case, use case entails. So here, I have used notifications for user lifecycle management password activities. And I'm happy, and since I'm happy using FA login page, I am not using in corporate uh, or a pass application, so I'm not specified next URL. And the last set is I'm, I'm built an employee of the month app, and I'm using FA as IDP. And what I want is I want to redirect after post password reset, I want to redirect that set of users to this pass URL. And for the sake of this demo, I have redirected to our Oracle homepage. And this could very well be your pass page that you're built, right? So we have default user categories, and I, I say it basically employees using it for SSO. And what I've done is under notifications tab, I have disabled all notifications at the global level. Instead of going and disabling individual events, what I've done is I have basically uh, disabled at the global level for default user categories. That means on all the events will get uh, disabled. And this are the set of users. Since it's default categories, there will be a whole bunch of users over here, right? So this is the default user population. So that's that. And next, I've created the employee local. As I told, this are the set of users who are basically, and this could be your suppliers or whatever use case may be. So in this, I'm just saying employees not set up for corporate SSO. And in this set of user base, I'm basically, uh, I'm happy with the seated notifications. I'm gonna use that. And I have assigned a user called Joe Adams. So now Joe Adams is basically not using corporate single sign-on. And all this user lifecycle management is basically going through Fusion applications. So I'll assign Joe to this employee local user category. And similarly, let's look at the employee pass FAIDP. So this case is basically a pass application is using FAS identity provider, and it's not using an external identity store. And I'm using uh, a, a pass URL. So for the sake of this demo, let's consider Oracle homepage as a pass uh, application. So post password reset, I'm, I should have all my users getting redirected to this next URL that's defined over here. And this next URL will, must will always be an external URL outside of your uh, FA pod URL. And notifications, yes, I'm happy using existing set, but only key thing is implicitly since I've provided next URL, my password reset URLs now will have the next URLs in it. I'm gonna demo when I do a password reset. And let's see users. So I've assigned Jane Smith. So now Jane is assigned for as the pass app and she's got the next URL. And Joe basically has been assigned for uh, local group. And uh, all the rest of the users are using corporate SSO. And so they, even though when they do forward password, they won't get any notification. So now let's go walk through the use, uh, like a password reset flow of the demo and how does it manifest itself for user category. It does specifically for next URL, right? So let me sign out. I logged in as an admin user who has got access to the security console. So let me go to forgot password. So now we go to now we created Joe, right? Joe Adams is now an employee local. So I, uh, Joe forgot his password. He's coming over here, and uh, let's pick Joe to get his password. So essentially, what's going to happen is. He came in, so he requested for his password reset. So as soon as he uh, does this operation, he should now get an email. So now he got a notification from the system saying uh, you requested for a password reset, and this is your one-time password reset uh, 
that token. So now let's go and reset Joe's password. So I click on the link that I got in my email, and I'm gonna reset my password. So I, I did my password reset. So as soon as uh, you would have noticed after my password reset got completed, I got redirected back to my Fusion login page, right? Because employee local user category was not assigned a next URL and employee local was expected to basically use the uh, FAS identity provider. So now basically we reset the password and uh, we are back into the FA login page and now we can log in as uh, two items into the system. But uh, that is not uh, uh, our demo and since we reset Joe as part of our uh, uh, security uh, mechanics, what we do is we send out a notification to Joe saying, hey Joe, looks like somebody reset your password. If it's not you, go check with your administrator. Maybe something's going on, right? And this is all this functionality exists in R12. We are moving that at the user category level, right? So we reset password for Joe. He got his notification. And after, since he was not using next URL, we redirected back to the FBI login page. Now let's go look at how the experience is going to be for Jane, right? So Jane was a pass user. He's been configured to use the Employee of the Month app. And Jane is basically being assigned to use uh, FAS Identity Provider. So let's go and reset. Uh, Jane came to FA, and so she forgot a password. So let's go ahead and reset Jane's uh, password. So I go to the same motion. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm requesting for a password change for Jane Smith, and now the system is gonna now will be generating a one-time token, and we should shortly be receiving an uh, email for Jane. And one thing that I wanted to highlight is you will now notice that the Jane's password reset email will now have a, a token, a one-time token, as Joe had. But along with that, Jane will also have the next URL as part of uh, the URL. And uh, even though the next URL is there in the email that gets sent out, uh, we won't let any uh, manipulate it. For example, if somebody gets hold of that email, and let's say we want to change the next URL to something else, not in Security Console, but uh, uh, not in Security Console, but let's say when they got their email and they got uh, in there. So we will basically ensure that the next URL, nobody will be able to manipulate. So now let's see if we got the email. Uh, somebody messaged my screen is stuck. My screen is not stuck. I, I'm just waiting for my notification even to get uh, triggered. Let's see if it came by. If not, it come. Okay. So Jane's email just came by. So you now notice the next URL is prepended to the one-time token. And if somebody gets hold of this uh, link, and if they try to manipulate next URL, it, it doesn't matter. No matter whatever they try to change the next URL, we'll always ensure, we'll look up the next URL that the user is configured in Security Console, and we'll ensure that the user is always directed to them. So I'm going to click on this link. And now I'm going to reset Jane's password. And I'm going to click on Submit. So now you will notice that post password reset, I got redirected to the oracle.com website, which was primarily my next URL that I've configured. And again, next URL cannot be a URL within FA application. It will always be a URL outside of FA and typically a pass application. Right? So that was. Uh, the demo, and again, as 
part of our security hygiene. We also send, hey, James, somebody reset your password. If it's not you, go check something happened to your password. So that was the demo. So I, we demonstrated how do we basically go create user categories, right, with the demo, and how, how do we go about uh, basically deleting a user category. And before deleting a user category, you would have to ensure users are not there. We went through that flow and we saw that see the notifications you cannot manipulate. You can only enable disable notifications. We went through that. And uh, I also demonstrated a, set, a use case uh, which, which seems very common to interacting with our customers is like you could bucket into different uh, user segments. And the user segments that we demoed here is we created defaults. That's where I expect the big chunk of my user population using corporate single sign off. And I've disabled notifications, so that means I'm managing all notifications to the external corporate identity provider. It could be your Active Directory ADSS or any other cloud instance identity provider that you have. And the second category, what I created was an employee local user category, and these are basically users who are managed in Fusion applications. And uh, you want all those notifications to go out, so I have that enabled. And I don't want any next URLs configured, so I left it blank. And I assigned Joe to basically employee local. And I demoed on how post password reset for Joe, I got redirected back to the FA login screen. And that is the existing behavior that we have today. So that will continue to work if you don't specify next URL. And I also created a uh, new user category called employee pass, where in this specific use case, your pass application is using FAS identity provider. And uh, for this, I had the notification enabled and I had given the next URL, and I assigned Jane for this group, and I also demonstrated how when I completed my password reset action for Jane, I got redirected to the pass application instead of going back to the SA application. So with, with that, we basically conclude the demo and I appreciate all of you being in the uh, in the call so I see that there have been few questions in the, uh, in, the in the chat window so we will review the uh, questions and basically respond back in, in this thread and all this PPT and this live stream should be available in a day's time so again in conclusion so this is a safe harbor statement like what we spoke it's just for information purposes only and again, thanks for attending the call. So with that, we will conclude uh, today's session. Thank you. On behalf of Oracle University, thank you for attending this live presentation.